Western Montana has its own Sully. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana morning. It's Monday, September 19th, 2016. Right now we have 40 degrees under a partly cloudy sky. Our newscast this morning, sponsored in part by Selway Armory on Stockyard Road. More guns and ammo than anyone in Missoula. The best prices in Montana. Montana's premier firearms dealer. Our top story this morning, the newly released Clint Eastwood movie, Sully, may be making hay at the box office, but Missoula has its very own Sully in Skip Owings. Friday, Skip and his wife Judy were on their way from the Missoula airport to Kalispell when he noticed some problems with the engine on his Cessna 172 aircraft. I was about 6,500 feet and uh, headed for Evero Canyon, and as soon as I declared a May Day, my wife had never heard that word before, and... Uh, she knew something was pretty amiss. Owings then said a word that his wife Judy had never heard before, and that word was, again, May Day. I uh, kept pointing out fields to her that we could land in if necessary, and uh, thought we might make the airport, but just as we were coming out of that little canyon, uh, the engine seized up and, and quit. Owings described his emergency landing at a field near the Jellystone Park RV facility. Set it up into a good healthy glide with plenty of airspeed in case I encountered a fence or a ditch or something. But it all looked pretty good and uh, quite a rough landing, but uh, we made a cloud of dust and quite a bit of weeds flying around, but we, we made a good landing. Several agencies responded to the scene, including the Missoula Airport Emergency Response Team, Missoula Rural Fire, Frenchtown Fire, and the Missoula County Sheriff's Office. Owings said the plane's in perfect shape, aside from the engine seizing up and no one was injured. Owings agreed that, in this case, God really was his co-pilot. You could call him Sully, but he still prefers Skip. A Town Square media colleague was killed in a two-motorcycle crash in Judith Basin County, west of Lewistown, yesterday. The crash occurred about 11.40 a.m. at mile marker 64 on U.S. Highway 87 near Eddy's Corner. Brian Gamroth, known as Brian Scott, a K2 radio announcer, one of Wyoming's biggest media figures, died Sunday in a motorcycle crash near Lewistown. The Montana Highway Patrol arrived at the scene at 12.09 p.m. and determined that the two motorcycles were traveling eastbound and attempting to pass a series of westbound vehicles. When oncoming traffic in the westbound lane forced them to abruptly pull back into the eastbound lane. The second motorcycle made contact with the first, causing them both to crash. Gamwath was killed on the scene. The other was taken to Lewistown with what appeared to be non-life-threatening injuries, according to Trooper Travis Dillon of the Montana Highway Patrol. While the University of Montana struggles with declining enrollment, Montana State University enrollment appears to be booming, so much so that Bozeman Mayor Carson Taylor says the university system and the city need to get together to talk about issues related to student housing. The question was asked about the increasing enrollment at MSU, and my response was, yeah, it's putting pressure on the city to create housing because they're not creating uh, housing on campus as fast as they're increasing students that are moving to Bozeman and needing a place to live. My main point was we need to sit down and talk to them, and we need a real collaborative effort on the part of the city, the county, and MSU. According to, during a recent forum, Mayor Taylor made some recommendations about MSU's growth, which haven't been well received by the university system. But he says his main point is that the era of silo government is over and the different governing bodies need to collaborate. One idea would be that they don't grow any faster than, than the housing can be produced for the students. And, uh, and that be, the headline became something like, Mayor thinks MSU should cap its enrollment um, uh, called up and uh, tried to make an appointment with uh, Dr. Cruzado, and I expect that I will sit down and talk with her in the next week or two. Both Missoula and Bozeman face housing issues, but the enrollment issue is almost opposite of that at MSU. At the U of M, enrollment has been falling for about the last five years, dropping by more than 17 percent, over 2,500 students in that span of time. Federal prosecutors have their first guilty plea in a multi-state drug trafficking case involving at least 20 people, including a Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, gastroenterologist and his family. The Spokesman Review reports that Gina Milho pleaded guilty this week to conspiracy to distribute heroin, oxycodone and methamphetamine. Milho and 10 others were indicted by a federal grand jury in Coeur d'Alene back in April. In a plea agreement, Milho admitted she was part of a group that prosecutors say was headed by Lauren Tolley, the wife of Stanley Tolley. He's a gastroenterologist who worked at Kootenai Health. He's charged with conspiracy to launder money. Prosecutors say the group transported drugs from Nevada to California to Idaho, Washington, Montana, and North Dakota from 2009 until this year.
The U of M Alexander Blewett III School of Law will be hosting the Browning Symposium coming up Friday, September 30th with the topic, Sexual Assaults, Conflicts Between Campus and Courts. Associate Professor Anthony Johnstone said President Royce Engstrom will kick off the symposium to be followed by the keynote speakers. The keynotes are both our federal U.S. Attorney Mike Cotter as well as Montana State Attorney General Tim Fox. And then there'll be a range of legal scholars um, with expertise in federal Title IX law, criminal law, due process rights of victims and suspects. Johnstone said the purpose of the symposium is not a response to the John Krakauer book, Missoula, Rape and the Justice System in a College Town. It's not going to be focused on the past here at the University of Montana or particular cases or particular controversies. It really has a forward-facing national focus on solutions that are available all over the country under both state and federal law to address all of the issues that arise with sexual assault in the campus setting, um, both in terms of the students who may be victims of sexual assault as well as students who may be accused of sexual assault. John Stone said the symposium will be free and open to the public. The road Roadways that crisscross Missoula are under a mishmash of management, city, county, and state. Sometimes it can be difficult to make changes when they're needed. Missoula County School District 1 Superintendent Mark Thain has been pushing for a signal change at an intersection near Meadow Hill School where a student was struck by a vehicle last spring. Oftentimes they'll try and cross right there where Reserve and 39th intersect uh, near the entrance to the Missoula Fresh Market. Uh, and that is state highway, so I would expect the Department of Transportation would not signal that. Uh, being that it's within about half a block of an actual stoplight. But there are some uh, improvements we believe that could occur that make that intersection to the east safe and a viable crossing. Although the intersection near Meadow Hill is getting all the attention, Thane says there are many other crossings that need attention as well. That's really hard to say. I don't know how I prioritize one over the other. I would say anytime you have a major thoroughfare, so I would say Higgins Avenue, 39th Street, uh, those are the big ones. Around town, you could find a smattering of those others. Russell Street has a couple areas that are challenging to us. Despite troubles at some crossings, Thane praised the city for building and expanding sidewalks. News talk time now is 612. News talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Partly sunny skies today with our high temperatures in the upper 60s. Winds will be breezy with wind gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. Increasing clouds tonight, lows in the low 40s. A slight chance of showers and storms on Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECA 13.